Can you guys hear me now? <laughs> okay, so I'll just hold this here and try not to create too much feedback or whatnot. Uh, so we were staying at Hotel Faucher in Pennsylvania, and when we checked in, we had booked like the bare minimum room, which we stayed a couple times. It's practically a closet on the first floor, um, but Orvis was allowed, so we were really happy to, to be there, and we checked in. And this was waiting for us, and it was just a bottle of wine, a couple of things, like a couple little macarons and uh, some homemade chocolates, and we were in a corner room on the top floor. We had gorgeous views, it was a giant king-size suite, it was, it was amazing, and we had no idea what had happened, because map and menu was, was nothing really. I mean, it, to us it was a lot, but to everyone else it didn't matter at all. Um, this made Orvis really happy. And this is <laughs> Orvis rolling around in the backyard. He actually spent like hours staring out the windows at all the people passing by. And it was, it was an amazing trip. And, and we realized there's something more to Map and Menu. Um, what? Why, why do businesses do this? Um, it doesn't cost the hotel anything. And I'm going to just use this in the, the Map and Menu example. The, the thing is, a lot of this can be extracted into, into any, any topic of blog. So, for us, we found out, you know, it doesn't cost the hotel anything. The room is open, the wine is available from the restaurant downstairs, and they get something in return. We're taking great photos, and we have a professional-looking website that's giving them a positive review. So online, when you search for Hotel Go Share now, Map and Menu comes up, and that means a lot to it, because Joe Schmo, who's visiting and trying to find out more information about Hotel Go Share, has no idea that we only have a few hundred visits or something like that. They, they honestly believe that we are the next Condé Nast Traveler. Uh, <laughs> so this is the, the professional looking review. Since then we've done like six reviews of Hotel Fosher because we're always going to stay there and every time they just treat us like we're family. They write notes to Orvis and everything. It's, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> um, back to the what to what the what. Businesses these days are starting to realize that anything can go viral. Um, you, can, you can take a picture, it can, it can be, you know, repinned a, a thousand times on Pinterest, you know, 20,000 times on Tumblr, and all of that links back to the website, or links on Facebook, or Twitter can be shared over and over, and then, you know, every now and then, you can get the coveted reblog on Condé Nast Traveler or something like that. So, businesses are really starting to realize that there's, they don't have to just cater to the, the, the world-renowned um, reviewers of, you know, tech products, or hotels, or restaurants. Um, they, they can really just start to, there's a power in, you know, a thousand <coughs> small people talking about it instead of one or two really big people talking about it. Since then, I've had a lot more upgrades, some really crazy sweets, a lot of good wines, some fun foods, a lot of orbits rolling around in different properties. And now for my little disclaimer, because I'm getting ready to talk about how you can do this for your blog. Um, we put a ton of work into Map and Menu. We work on it constantly. Anytime I'm not building a theme for WordPress.com, I'm working on Map and Menu. Um, whether it's a small visual edit or we're writing, you know, content for a month from now or something, we, we like, it's a passion of ours, and that's what it always was. Like, we never reached out to Hotel Bushair for the upgrade, the original thing that got it started. You know, it's just, we, we love doing it, and we did it all the time. So, we don't have to work. And there's no simple way about that. If you want your site to be big, if you want to get things from it, it's going to be really hard to be the next Darren Fireball, but you can be like a semi pro blogger. Um, I wanted to just briefly cover why I did the metaphor um, of the minor league baseball. I think that it's uh, a decent metaphor to bring everyone in. Really get some butts in the seats. Look at this. This is fantastic. And more importantly, uh, Super professional athletes are, you know, doing it for the love of, of, of the game. They're, they're trying their hardest. They're constantly building... This is going to be great to have notes. Um, they're constantly building a following. They're, 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 they're leveling up their skills at every time, at, at every point in their career. But at the end of the day, if they never get called up to the big leagues, they're fine with that because they're getting enough out of it the way that they're doing it now to be happy. Um, and that's kind of what I believe that we should all be doing when we're blogging. Um, if you're not happy doing it, you're not going to continue to blog, you're not going to blog consistently, which is probably the biggest rule that you can take away today, just blog constantly and blog consistently. Um, so a little bit of how to be a better blogger. Um, 
Our first section will be definition and iteration of your brand, your message, and your voice. Now this is kind of something that Meredith and I did very early on without even realizing it, but we came up with an about page as like a general plan of what we were going to be as bloggers. And you can do this if you've been blogging for two years. It's nice to, to step back. And everyone's about page used to be, you know, like, I, I'm Meredith, I'm Michael, blah, 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 we, we like to blog, the end. But really, you should put some more thought into it. Who are you and who do you want your, your audience to view you as? Do you want to be an anonymous reviewer? Do you want to be, you know, this super celebrity? I mean, you can build that all in your about page. You can make yourself sound amazing. Or you can just come across as like two genuine people like Meredith and, and I do. What are your goals with your website? Um, Map and Menu is not a traditional critiquing review site. If we don't enjoy a place, it never makes it on the Map and Menu. We only write about places we love, and we find that businesses have really responded to that because they're not getting bashed by us at any time. At the same time, everything we write about is, is good, so that, that brings up a few um, difficulties when it comes to writing. You find yourself using the same adjectives over and over and over and over again, which is tough. But if you take your time, you read over what you've written, you know, you can you can adjust to that. But what are your goals? Yes? So the slides posted the the slides will be posted right after this. I'll tweet them out. They're, they're available on Cloud Up. Um, so what are your goals? And uh, how are you going to to achieve these goals? How are you going to write? You don't have to write all of this out explicitly in your about page. Uh, you can you can sit down, write this down on a sheet of paper, have it in the back of your mind. Just know that at any given point in time, Meredith and I will never write a negative review. That's part of the how will we do this. We're never going to come back and say something mean. And every time we write a a post, we're constantly thinking about how we're going to achieve, it, achieve this. If you mix this into your live about page when you get around to getting your blog set up, or if you already have your blog set up, this will kind of keep you in check. Your users are going to come to this page, see who you are, know what you're about, and they're going to come back if they enjoy what they're finding here. Think about if you had just like a scattered mismatch of, of, of anything on your blog, because it's like one of those stream of conscious, this is, this is what's coming up in my life right now. And, and you didn't have an about page. People would come to it and just be like, what the what? Um, so, so just take your time, come up with your about page, and think about that at every point in the process of blogging. Um, as, you, as you go along, as you begin to blog, um, concentrate on your voice. Concentrate on what, how, how you originally stated that you wanted people to, to know you. Um, concentrate on your writing style and your grammar. I'm not saying that you have to be perfectly grammatically correct. There are tons of famous bloggers out there and semi-famous bloggers out there who maybe didn't get out of fifth grade. Like, it's 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 all about how you want your, your viewers to read you. They want you to be really laid back and informal. Like, just make sure you stick to that. You know, I prefer to be grammatically correct, but, you know, you, you don't have to take it to some extreme, like, teacher <laughs> level of, of, of your grammar. Um, Pay attention to your approach. So pay attention to, for us, our, our blog is largely image-based. Um, it used to be these really long, thought-out, historical perspectives of the places we were staying and eating, and people didn't care about that. They really just cared about Meredith's photos, so they were coming to the site. We, we, we came to this approach that it was going to be largely photos with short, pleasant blurbs about it. And ever since then, we've stuck to that. And every time we write a post, we come back to that. And then. We came to that because of the user feedback. And you're going to notice, over time, people are going to start commenting, people that aren't your mom. Um, you're going to notice that people will comment. You're going to notice through your stats that people are going to come back to certain sites, through, I mean, certain posts. People are going to uh, interact socially with certain posts. You're going to see you know, one image that you never thought would ever take off get you know, repinned a thousand times. Um, but pay attention to that, and pay attention to what was different about that from any of your content previously. I know a lot of this sounds intuitive, but if you're, if you're constantly looking back at these things, you're going to become a better blogger over time. Um, my biggest thing is blog constantly and consistently. Um, we blog two major posts every week, and then we have filler posts, which are serial posts. So every Monday we do kind of like a weekend in review. <coughs> What did we do last weekend that'll never make it onto the blog? Otherwise, it's normally like a couple Instagram shots or something like that. And a 
in a write up about how lovely life in Maine is. Or, and on Friday, we, we put together like a reading list of things we found interesting on the internet of the week before. That's total filler content. It's really easy to push out because we're all online, we're all looking up these things. But once you start to have followers who believe in you and like you as a person, they're going to start to, to really care about even the filler content. And they'll come back for these weekend reviews where it's a picture of Orbis swimming, you know, for the 600th time in, <laughs> in, a, in a row. Or they're going to they're gonna start reading the articles that you're writing about. And that just builds this loyal readership where, where people really care about what you have to say. Um, or I hope people care about what I have to say. Or else I don't know why I'm blogging. Now I'm blogging for myself. Um, create an editorial calendar. Meredith is ridiculously good at this, and I wish I had um, access to my calendar. Um, she creates a Google Calendar that's shared with me, and every single day has this purple block on it. And I know that that's an app and menu, and it drives me nuts sometimes, because sometimes you don't want to write, and sometimes you don't want to blog, and you don't want to go on and comment, and things like that. Meredith's are really good about keeping all of that in check and having it balanced out. But if you do, like, in our case, if we do like a week of really fun stuff, we have to make that last for a month or else we'll go broke. Because if we're constantly going to a new hotel or constantly eating out, we're, we're not going to make enough money and eventually we're going to go broke. So, so having an editorial calendar lets us space everything out and, and not have it just dump on the user, on the reader all at once. And then kind of along that line, I rate my post in bulk because Six days out of every week, I don't feel like writing. I don't feel like, I spend all day long in the WordPress admin. I don't feel like being in there sometimes. And so when I am in that extra, you know, Hemingway, drunk-esque writing mode, I will, I will just bang out, you know, 30 posts. And, and, and we'll have those sitting there in draft, and then they can be, they can be published, you know, when the editorial calendar says so. Um, as far as the iteration part of this, I, I firmly believe that as you start to see the, the user feedback and as you start to feel what, what's working better for you, like um, when, I, when I feel like I'm, I'm writing well or I'm, I'm, I'm writing in a specific style that people seem to like take to and want to comment, I, I start to adjust my, my approach. And, and, I, and I, I'm always looking back at that original about page write-up that we did, but it's nice to be able to make these small changes that kind of stick to the main guideline, but cater to our users. Um, you make a small change, you see how people respond, and then you make more changes. Uh, luckily, because it's not our job, we can, and I guess if you're in this talk, it's none of y'all's jobs, full-time jobs, or maybe not. You know, we can kind of take our time with this. I'll make a small design change to the website. I'll let it see how it, how it, how it works for a few days for a few weeks, see if people are, are missing the, the map that we had on it, or the, we have these giant slider images that we axed a long time ago, and right after we axed them, we just saw this amazing uptick in traffic, because people were having to get past this, they were gorgeous images, they were just having to get past this giant slider at the top of the page. See how people respond and make more changes. Stick with what works, get rid of what doesn't. The cool thing about blogging is that you can constantly iterate. Um, the presentation part. When when you first start out, pick a blog name. I assume most of you have a blog name. Hopefully it's memorable um, or descriptive. For us, Map and Menu was lovely, this lovely and descriptive because it tells you exactly what our website's about right there. Um, we bought a domain, and I strongly suggest that all of you buy a domain because the next step has been a huge part in how we're getting these comp things and partnering with different groups, we set up an email through that domain. So you can either host your own email through your hosting service that's doing your website, or you can do something as simple as just send email through Gmail on a domain you know. Um, it's, it's under settings. I'll, I can include a link for you when I, when I tweet out this uh, presentation. But just make sure you have like a info at mapandmenu.com. For us, it's hello at mapandmenu.com because that harks back to that feel of how we want to be your best friend. Um, when we make a reservation and use hello at mapandmenu.com, we never have to say anything to the, the hotel owner. They always take it on themselves to look up Map and Menu, and then they see this and they're like, oh, these guys are a big deal. We're not. 
<laughs> but that's what gets you up onto the, onto the suite on the top floor because they see this and they, they've kind of made all these assumptions on their own. And it gives you a really professional feel and it, it takes nothing to do. It's, it's amazingly simple to set up. Um, we do all of our communication through uh, map and menu. And like when The Guardian called us, the newspaper in the UK, what? And they emailed us. <laughs> They emailed us at hello at Matt the Menu, and all of our communication was done back and forth through hello at Matt the Menu. And because of that, they they respected us like we were, you know, this this higher level of blogger. So setting up an email is a big deal. Um, I should have drank more water before I came in here. Um, Presentation-wise, customize your blog. I'm not I'm not asking you to to all be web designers and all go way overboard with uh, your blog customization. But a lot can be done just by finding a reliable thing. It's just the WordPress.org repository where you have thousands and thousands of themes to choose from. And then make some basic customizations. Um, core customizations in WordPress, you know, your, your header image, your background, uh, things like that can uh, vastly change the way that your blog looks and present this um, branded feel to your, your users and the people that you're contacting. Um, just the most basic edits can go really far away. And I'll show you some examples of that in just a second. And then when, when you're making these edits, remember to think back to your plan. Like we're friendly, so that's our whole thing. Be friendly and be positive. Our website's not black. Like they're just a, a basic, simple thing. Like map menu is not wildly designed. It's actually very minimal because we found the first iteration was, was blue and had highlights and it looked horrible, but as people just really started to care about Meredith's imagery, I just started stripping out all the extra stuff because that, that's, what, that's what really mattered. You, you, you design your blog to kind of envelop your content. The lovely part about being on WordPress, which I hope every single one of you are on, is that you can you can change that. If you, if you feel like the theme that you have right now isn't doing it exactly right, there are hundreds of thousands of other themes out there to choose from. It's, a, it's amazing how easily you can switch that over in your content should stay together. If you use WordPress.com theme, which you're free to download, your, your content will stay together. Double blood. <laughs> so WordPress.com, the blog, does this really cool series called One Theme, Three Ways. This is a theme that we released. You can download it. It's, it's Coraline. Uh, it, I'm not telling you guys to take this exact Theme. I'm actually not the biggest fan of this theme, which will probably make my team lead sad because I'm pretty sure he designed it. But this theme, users will do very basic customizations using the tools on WordPress.com, which are kind of like locked down. We, we really prevent you from doing a ton of customization, but we have this team internally that, that creates these tools that allow you to do this kind of controlled customization. So this is one theme three ways, Coraline. And this is also Coraline. She stripped out the borders, the background. Um, a lot of this is done just out of the layout settings. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Um, so she she stripped this out and really made it about her fashion, which is that's actually no her graphic design. Sorry. Uh, Coraline is also done this way for this this illustrator. She. Is still using, like, look at the nav up at the top. It's still the Coraline theme. All she did was just, she created a header in Photoshop and uploaded it. And then in the widgets, these are just text widgets where she uploaded images from her media gallery. That's all it is. But this, these two sites look completely different. And don't even get me started on that. And then, look at this one. What? It's like a brown background. That's all they changed. Brown background. They added a custom header on it and they changed the color of the fonts. Like, very basic customizations. You could do these customizations 15 minutes. Um, all of these fit the content of their websites, and because of that, they really feel like, I'm not staring at another 2011 that hasn't been touched. I mean, there's no problem with that if you're creating amazing content. You can have a very basic, standard, canned blog. But for just minor, minor changes, you can go a really long way. And then networking and growth. So this is be social, not spammy. Um, we're kind of middle ground on Map and Menu. We we have 
I believe in joining the networks that make sense and sitting on the networks that don't make sense because you don't, you know, want a Reddit user out there with the map and menu username to start posting stuff and making you look bad. Um, but we have Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. And those are all very visual, very connected, and they make a ton of sense for us. Um, if you're going to be a little more tech review based, you know, maybe Reddit makes more sense. Uh, not as much Instagram, obviously. Uh, but, but join the, the networks and then tie them into your design and tie your blog into those networks. So on Map and Menu, we have the icons right at the top. So you can very quickly find out how to get to any of our social networks. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, which is kind of hard because we have infinite scroll, the, the same icons are, are reiter re reiterated down there. Uh, a lot of blogs will work in like an Instagram widget. If, if like you feel like that social network is a big part of your presence, I highly recommend mixing it into a, like a more visually available way in your design. Um, there are plenty of tools out there that'll let you mix in your Instagram widget, your Facebook feed, your Twitter feed. Um, definitely mix those in. And then this is actually well overlooked, which is sad in your different social networks, make sure that they can link back to your website. Like, make sure that you go in and set that up. Because if I come to the Twitter feed of Map and Menu with only 280 followers, see, they're not very big, uh, you, you can go there, and if you couldn't get back to Map and Menu, you'd have no idea what we were. And, and that, that really just like creates this kind of stopgap where people are completely lost. Uh, Instagram's another example. You can, you can upload a URL there, and I, I strongly suggest that, obviously, Facebook. Um, the next part of networking and growth is start commenting, linking, and liking. Find local blogs that are similar to you. Um, I, we did that through a blog aggregating service in Portland. There's a portlandfoodmap.com, and he's just a guy who curates links about other food uh, blogs in the area, and then puts them all in one place. And we reached out to this guy and started talking to the different blogs that he was, he was talking to. And we started going to happy hours, we started commenting on their blogs, they started linking to us, we started linking to them in weekend reads, more people started coming to our site. It's like we were pulling from this greater network of connections <laughs> by linking back to each other. There's obviously like this in SEO, like I don't know how you guys feel about SEO or whatever, there's there are slight SEO benefits to also going out there and linking on a bunch of people's blogs. If that's your game, do it. You know, like we do that and I think it works a lot. I also think our domain name actually plays the biggest factor into our SEO. Um, but uh, attend events, which you guys are, conferences, meetups, and happy hours. We, we met so many great people at the local food meetup happy hour and we're gonna do that now for, for a, a group that, a group of traveling bloggers in Portland that go around to different cities as a group and like the city the city tourism industry will, will comp all their rooms and all their hotels and stuff like that. We just, you band together with all these similar bloggers and you're able to achieve a lot more. It's a lot easier to contact someone and say like, hey, can I, you know, review your product? Can I, can you give me your product so that I can review it? If you're also going to have, you know, 15 of your friends review it and your, your reach is now that much greater. Um, watch your stats. Oh, sorry for that typo and adjust your approach. Um, that, that's just constant. And everything that you should, and everything you should do, everything you do while blogging, you should always be watching your user feedback, your stats, and adjusting your approach. Um, and then your return on investment, which is, checking sometimes here. Uh, your, your return on investment, which is kind of like our, our whole thing, is getting something back. For us, we love to, we love to write, but we love the upgrades. Like the upgrades are awesome. <laughs> when a chef comes out and talks to you, you feel like this really weird like sense of like satisfaction. You're like, yeah, I know you. <laughs> I'm not gonna throw a chef's name out there because it's being recorded. Um, but or when they send out a they send out a complimentary dish or you know like or the guardian contacts you or something like that. You know, you, there's there's this really like ego boosting thing. And I, I probably don't need my ego. But you, know, uh, you can barter. You can uh, add Google AdWords. You can do affiliate marketing. Uh, we 
there's some affiliate services that will set you up for life and you'll, you will be making like crazy money. We do not have the traffic to get into any of those affili affiliate ser services, but we do. There are a ton of like specific business affiliate marketing services like uh, One Kings Lane will pretty much accept anyone. And then anytime you're you know, writing about a picnic you went on or something like that, and you link to a picnic basket with your uh, with your like little user ID on the end, we make a little bit of money if someone buys a picnic basket from One Kings Lane. Uh, my favorite is actually at the bottom of our website in the footer, there's a link to Media Temple. And there's an affiliate marketing service through Media Temple. If someone clicks that link and signs up, we get a free month of web hosting. For us, that's one of our biggest costs right now. It's just like, I mean, that's your hard cost is web hosting. And, and every person who signs up, it's like a free month. So you have one viral post that goes out to a thousand people and a couple people sign up, you're set for half a year. You know, it's, it's, awesome. it's awesome. Complimentary products and services, we love this. Um, anytime that anyone approaches us to, to talk about a product and service, we very clearly lay out, we, we're only gonna write about this if we enjoy it. You have to set that up very early on. Because some people will give you something, like we'll get an upgrade to some hotels, and like the bathroom's dirty or something like that. And I'm kind of a germaphobe, so a dirty bathroom is just like an instant no. I'm pretty much gonna wanna check out. Um, we never write about them, but you have to make that clear very early on, because if someone has given you something, whether you ask for it or not, they feel like you're going to reciprocate, and it's, it can be awkward. And uh, we haven't really run into a lot of it with Map and Menu, because we very early on made it known to people um, that that's, that was kind of our game. And then partnerships. I keep harking back to this, because it, it just came up, but The Guardian wrote us an email a, a month ago, and they're like, hey, we're doing a main travel bit. We'd love to have a local main blogger talk about it. And why are we on their radar? But we did this post. We made a chunk of change for doing it, a lot more than we've made for anything else at Map and Menu. And now our name is out there with The Guardian, so maybe the New York Times will call us or something like that. <laughs> uh, I, I love that. Uh, and then this is kind of like the biggest point of your return on your investment and, and, and trying to get things from people. It's rejection therapy. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but when you first start asking people for a slight upgrade, if, if, that's your, if that's your thing, if you're staying at a hotel, or if you're reviewing a product and you email the company and you're like, hey, I'd really love to review your Microsoft, your, your, your service tablet or something like that, the first no is going to come across like this, and it hurts, and you're just like, oh my god, I can't believe I did that, like I put myself out on the line, they said no, but really this is what they meant, it's just like, hey, we're not really interested, and it's the worst case scenario, people are just going to say no, there's I would be shocked if like Microsoft went and tweeted your name and was like, these people contacted me. They get, they get thousands of pings all the time for people who want to do something similar. Like I said, it only makes sense for them. It costs them little to nothing to do to give you said product or service or or, or, or partner with you in some way. So so like the no's are gonna be few and far between. And once you start hearing them, they become like second nature. So um I guess really, I wanted to cover a few resources that that matter about uh, some of the stuff I talked about today. Daily Post at WordPress is probably one of the most comprehensive resources on how to become a better technical writer and blogger. There are things like how to set up your editorial calendar on there. There are daily and weekly writing challenges to like get you to keep blogging and blog more consistently. There are interviews with famous bloggers, semi-famous bloggers, there are grammar posts, it's just, it's an amazing resource. Um, the Jetpack plugin, this is just a slight plug, a lot of the things I talked about today, like um, tying your social networks to your blog, if you have little to no experience doing that, go and download the Jetpack plugin, it'll allow you to do all this, and then every time you write a post, it'll be tweeted out and Facebooked out, it's really easy. It also comes with some really com comprehensive stats that'll allow you to watch what you're there's like another benefit of like we distribute that content throughout our content network, but like at, I don't really see a ton of gains in that yet. I think we're, we're working on making that a lot better. And then also commenting. If you have Jetpack enabled on your website, I can comment. If I'm, I'm a WordPress.com user, 
I'm always on WordPress.com. I can go to any site that has Jetpack on, and I don't have to put in my, my username, my email, my name, my, 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 my address, and stuff like that. Commenting, likes, all that's tied into to Jetpack. And then Google Analytics, if you really want to deep dive into analytics, like we have all kinds of analytics set up on our website. I know how many times people click the Instagram widget. I know how many times people, in each one of our posts, we link back to the, the hotel or the, the restaurant that we ate at. I know how many times people click on those. And, and that's stuff that comes in handy when you want to start approaching affiliate marketers. Because they're going to start asking for like how many users you have, how many page views you have. And, and all of that can be very well tracked and recorded in Google Analytics. That's the end. Thanks for walking <laughs> out. Um, we have a few minutes if you want to ask a question. Um, I think they'll bring you a uh, microphone. Thank you. Um, I'd like to know how you comply with the FTC requirements for advertising. For advertising? Yeah. Right now we do no advertising on our website. Um, it's just not part of our thing. Affiliate marketing, uh, the affiliates actually handle the FTC requirements, and then the, the links they give you can be dropped into your website and it's kind of covered under the affiliate marketer. And I believe the same would be true for AdWords. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, maybe I wasn't clear. I'm interested in knowing how do you keep up with notices to the public? Those are companies. Notices. Notices that you're being paid or you got something for. If we ever get an upgrade, it's mentioned in every one of our posts. We make it clear, very transparent to both our user and the person that we originally go into. Kind of, it's not, a, it's not a deal. Like I said, a lot of times it's very, um, it's gifted more or less because we never ask for it. But even when we're given an upgrade and we didn't ask for it, we tell our users that there was a, a pleasant upgrade, and that's why we're writing about them. I have one other question. Yes. I, I know you mentioned that you would write to, let's say, UK using your own email address. But you also mentioned a Gmail address. Can you use another email address for uh, like newsletters or blasts or something like that? Yes. Yeah, so avoid being blacklisted. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we we use uh, an email address that's so we actually post our email. We we don't just forward it through a Gmail address. But we have a general address that's, you know, hello at Map and Menu. And if you sign up to subscribe to our website, like, that's where you're going to get contacted from. I have my own Michael at Map and Menu and Meredith has hers, Meredith Map and Menu. So we do a lot of that communication back and forth with, um, with the people that we're, we're like, the hotels and the restaurants, anyone that we're reaching out to. Um, so that's kind of our, our email management right now. But, but what you can do is, you know, through your, your Gmail account, you can set up multiple send from email addresses. Uh, the, the subscription widget might not work off of a, a forwarded email, but that's something I can look into for you guys. So. Hey Michael, do you ever use Harrow? Uh, no, I've, I've never used Harrow. It's help a reporter out? They no, send out daily requests for different topics? I've, I've never used Harrow. Uh, I've used um, like Wiki Commons requests for like different images and stuff, but I've never used a, a service that comes to us. Asking. I'll send you the link. Awesome. Thank you. It sounds like really cool. Anyone else? Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh yes. Uh, another benefit of Jetpack is that there's the default WordPress mobile theme. So if you don't have any mobile ability on your website, you don't have a responsive design, but you don't want to change your main design, Jetpack, and there are a few other plugins out there. I'm obviously <coughs> plugging Jetpack because I work for Automatic, but it gives you an ability to turn on a responsive theme. I strongly suggest making your website responsive. That was one of our small edits. At one point, I was looking at our stats, and 35% of our visitors were coming from mobile devices, and we were not responsive, which is a slap in the face for a web designer. So I, I very quickly rolled out some responsive edits, and I, mean, I think that the interaction there is, is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think Coraline is is responsive by default, and if not, if you're on .com and you're using Coraline, you have access to that same Jetpack mobile theme, so you can turn it on or off depending on whether or not the theme is. So um, I can I can find out if Coraline is. Yeah. I think she's next to the out there. Okay, um, two questions. First, yep. how do you find your affiliate marketing?
marketing products to look to on your site. And second, um, I'm also a food and travel blogger about yes. vegan food. But how do you um, determine what articles, what blog posts to write between your travels? Like I, I can do think of enough topics like travel tips yeah. a few times a year, but how can you think of something like you said to write every couple weeks? Yeah, so we started doing things like uh, as we developed connections at different restaurants and hotels, we started to interview like bartenders that are really well known or different chefs around town. Things that cost us no money at all. Like we just reached out, and all these people love to do it because of the same reasons. Like their name is now out there, and if Serious Eats picks up our interview with the chef, like that gets spread all around. Those are a lot easier to do, and if you plan them out far in advance, you can kind of get a, a number of those built up to where you have kind of dead times in between. And then your other question was. Oh, the affiliate marketing products, uh, how yeah. do you find the ones that are appropriate? Yeah, so a lot of times, go to different blogs that you like to read, and if they have ads on them, a lot of those are done through affiliate marketing. If you hover over it, you can actually read in the URL what the affiliate is, or like, most of them are going to be done through, real. find smaller blogs that have ads. Don't do the big ones, because those are done through like, the services that are saying requiring certain traffic. And then, quickly, yes. Do you use any sort of email list software like MailChimp? Um, no, we don't use MailChimp. Uh, we use the Jetpack subscription widget, so every time a new post is sent out, uh, it sends an email to anyone who is subscribed to our blog. We have just not found um, a need for a newsletter service yet, but there are a lot of blogs out there that are making like are building some really like uh, passionate followers because they'll send out like a weekly, you know. This is what didn't make it onto our blog, or this is you know a, a synopsis of everything that happened in the last week in case you missed it. A lot of people are a lot more likely to check their emails than to come to your website. Yeah. But we, we personally have never done. Cool. Thanks, guys.